My first guest is Dr. James Winkley, who is a neurologist with Baptist Health. You're also the director of the Multiple Sclerosis um, center. Center. Okay, right. there we go. So you actually have a center that, that does all kinds of things in terms of treatment of multiple sclerosis. Right. The MS Society will certify groups of physicians and providers such as physical therapists, occupational therapists, and speech therapists. And we all get certified in being uh, having a certain level of expertise in treating multiple sclerosis. Well, well tell us, what, what is multiple sclerosis? We hear that a lot, but what is one of the symptoms? Right, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease of the nervous system. So what that means is, is your own immune system decides to attack your brain, spinal cord, or optic nerves. So people can have numbness, tingling, weakness, loss of vision, um, trouble with bowel and bladder are common symptoms. So. If somebody comes in and, and has those symptoms, there's not, I mean, how do you make the diagnosis? Because there's not a test you can do for multiple sclerosis. Right. Typically, um, the hallmark of the disease are these what we call white matter lesions or plaques on people's MRI scans of their brain. So it's necessary to, what starts the discussion is to get an MRI of the brain or the spinal cord. And from that, you'll see some characteristic changes on there, which lead people down a path where we do a series of blood tests and sometimes a spinal tap. And that's how we'll end up making a diagnosis. But not everybody who has those symptoms, tingling, numbness, have multiple sclerosis, so not everybody, your office isn't full of people worrying they have that. Right, that's true. It's, it, the incidence in the population is about one in a thousand people. It gets a lot of uh, attention, but there are a lot of reasons that people will have those conditions from, you know, a migraine headache mimicking some symptoms, sometimes neuropathy, a pinched nerve, discs in people's neck can also cause a lot of those symptoms. So just because you have those doesn't always mean that that leads to a diagnosis of MS. Is there a certain group of people that's more at risk for MS? Yeah, the, most commonly this happens to people right in the, what I consider the building times of their life, sometimes between 20 and 40 years of age. You think about that time, you're starting to get married, build a family. Um, it tends to happen women much more frequently than men, about three or four uh, women to every man who gets the disease. It typically happens to um, people of European descent, typically Northern European descent. That's not to say that other people in other ethnic groups can get it, but that's the most prominent, prominent group. And then also there's an interesting change in, um, in incidence of it as you get further away from the poles and you get into colder climates either further north or further south, we see the incidence increase and there's some belief that exposure to different viruses and also a vitamin D deficiency as you're um, less exposed to the sun, there is an increased incidence of it. There's new, some new treatments out there. Tell us about it. All right. It's been, I've been in practice for about 17 years now, and for probably for my first 10 years, from 2000 to 2010, we had what we called platform therapies, which were all injectables. And patients would repeatedly ask, you know, when is there going to be a pill or something else? And what we've seen really from about 2010 to now, we've seen three oral pills come out and at least four infusion therapies. And really I feel like with the amount of medications we have now, before when most people would, the question they would be, we'd give them a diagnosis of MS, they'd feel like, am I gonna end up in a wheelchair? And I think it's very realistic now with the medications we have for people to where we find them when we start to hopefully maintain them there for the rest of their lives so they don't have any worsening of their symptoms, changes on their MRI scan or worsening of disability. So if you make an early diagnosis you can institute treatment not to necessarily cure the disease but to make it like a chronic disease that's managed. That's correct. Everything about MS is prevention. The long term, uh, the previous goal was wait till someone's bad. And if you, the way the nervous system is, you get one nervous system from the time you're born to the time you die. Same set of cells and wiring. And so that's supposed to last you forever how long you live. So any injury you get to this over that period of time takes years off of the functioning of your nervous system. So the sooner we get people and treat them aggressively, the better the outcomes we see. Waiting till the disability has already been permanent, we're not gonna be able to reverse that. We'll be able to save everything they still have that's working well, but we really encourage people to see their neurologists, get on treatment, and treat early and effectively. That's great information. And here's a summary brought to you by Baptist Health about multiple sclerosis. 
Well, the thing we like to tell people when they've been diagnosed with MS is that it's not a terminal condition. An early diagnosis is, seems to be the key issue, is that as this disease has gone on for a longer period of time, we have less ability to impact where they're going to end up. So the sooner we get it treated and the more likely we're able to dramatically reduce their disease burden, the better they're going to do for the long term. Because once they get this disease, it's a lifelong condition. And the message we try to give them is hope. With the amount of medications that we have now to really change the course, they're called disease modifying drugs because they change the course of this disease. You can be significantly better. With the wide range of choices we have, we can find Find something for most people that's going to really improve their quality of life. It's not great that you've developed this, but we do really have good therapies that are going to help you. you know, our goal is to keep people working. We want to give them the things that they find to be the most fulfilling in life. We spend most of our time treating multiple sclerosis patients, and it's been our focus to try to reach out to the community and let them know that there can be a greater amount of services available to them, and having them all coordinated and having such a great team that I work with makes all the difference in the world.